Hello, everybody. Um, oh, Tel Aviv, fantastic. That's got to be the furthest from Jersey, I reckon, Tel Aviv. If anybody can beat Tel Aviv, please let us know where you're from. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to, uh, I think this is our fifth webinar, um, talking about IoT um, and all things all things related. Um, today, we're talking about connectivity platforms and um, what they can do for the enterprise, how they can boost enterprise value um, and, and, and uh, create um, new businesses in certain cases. Um, I'm joined today uh, by my esteemed colleague, David Lindblad. Uh, David, would you like to say hello and introduce yourself? Yes, thanks, Graham, and thanks for joining this webinar. So my name is David Lindblad, and I'm working as a senior IT product manager at JT. So responsible for uh, our connectivity services and connectivity management platform. So looking forward to share my experience in, in this area. Thank you. Um, and uh, we have with us serial entrepreneur, founder and CEO of uh, 102, um, one of our customers, um, Mart. Mart, um, we'd like to say hello, introduce yourself, please. Hello, hello, uh, happy to be here. Uh, but yeah, I'm uh, Mart, I'm the uh, founder and CEO of uh, 102. And uh, yeah, what we do is that we are carrier independent connectivity provider. We act as an aggregator of different carriers. And what we do is that we, uh, we are mostly focusing on eSIM because we think that uh, SIM or UICC is very uh, 1991. And, uh, and that's why we are pushing, of course, the eSIM the most. And, uh, and we have developed our own connectivity management uh, platform. Um, so happy to share our learnings there and uh, how we see the market. Um, and uh, yeah, in essence, what we try to do is like we try to become the telecom Tinder so that uh, uh, clients can, you know, uh, swipe left or right and pick the best uh, match for the case and keep on uh, managing it all from one, one place. So like the name says, one of these, so uh, our customers get uh, one eSIM, one platform, one support channel and uh, one end of month uh, invoice from us, but access to different, different uh, carriers. So that's what we, we do. And yeah, we have been doing this for five years and yeah, try to, uh, try to, uh, have a modern and fresh look into this, uh, uh, conservative sector. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so for everybody listening, uh, just so you know, we want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, the, the, these webinars started uh, last year when we were all not able to travel. There was no um, events happening, no, 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 no the normal business uh business um, things that you know, ways of meeting people and so we decided that if we started some webinars we didn't want them just to be a sales thing because why bother it's just, it's a bit dull and it's not particularly uh, interesting the idea of this uh, this webinar is it's interactive it's the concept is we've kind of met met at uh, an exhibition or event and we're sitting down having a coffee just chatting about uh something that's pertinent to the industry so uh please feel free to ask questions uh, the more questions you ask the more interesting it is we don't want this to be a monologue we really really do want this to be a dialogue um we'll be sharing some bits and pieces i've got a white paper that i'm going to share in a minute so everybody can can walk away with something um but also there'll be a, a there'll be a couple of questionnaires through, throughout the quiz so please feel free to answer those give us your opinions um, and we will try and make this as educational, as informative as possible. So what we'll do, David, if we can kick off, can you just talk about IoT, what happens with projects, when they fail, when they go well, what, what the whole, the whole uh, piece around that? Yes, so I think that's a good starting point for this discussion is to to say that you know most of the companies in the world they believe that IT is a very important part of the strategy and the future growth and this is from a number of reports that are available to read but in the same <coughs> reports we can read that many of these projects are failing 
and many fail before proof of concept and many fails later on and i think uh, that's uh, what we're going to discuss today how do you avoid this uh, uh, this failing of iot projects and i believe that one important part here is uh, an IT connectivity platform and also a good understanding why you select this platform and why you select this partner. Um, so I think that's a good uh, starting point here around this discussion. And, and I think <clears throat> generic, why are projects failing? And I think that is it's too much focus on technology. So you, you start from the wrong direction when you are planning your IoT project rather than starting uh, thinking about why you're doing this and what you want to achieve. So thanks for that. So, so, so Mark, that's the kind of the negative way of starting, positive way of starting. What makes projects succeed? Why, in your experience, what makes them successful? So it, uh, the success comes from the fact that if the enterprise is able to, uh, you know, approach it from top to bottom, bottom. Uh, so in in essence, to if they can clarify the goal, why they do it, how they do it, and how it's gonna, you know, change their business. Whenever they are, let's say, and let's assume that you know, if if an enterprise switches from you know, selling hardware to actually providing service, then this comes and starts from there. So, uh, so uh, it is important in, in the first place to set the goal, what uh, they try to accomplish and, uh, and uh, what kind of new opportunities and new revenue streams it, it creates for them and then actually come down to the point that what I need to run such a system, to run such a business, and, and then put all of the pieces together. Thanks for that. David, maybe you could also sort of pick up on how, how platforms have enabled businesses to pivot and, and, and make them more successful rather than, that, rather than failing. And what, what's your experience? What have you seen? Yeah, but I think I've been in the IoT for more than nine years. And during these nine years, it's been a big growth and still a big growth. And uh, I took three different companies as example, Caterpillar, Volvo, and, and General Electric. And I think Volvo and Caterpillar, for example, they have been forced to do this because, you know, uh, there were a time where Volvo could just sell a, a truck and there were no competitors. But today it's a global market and you can buy more or less the same truck in China for half of the price. So Volvo and Catapult are sat there and say, how can we still be competitive in the market? And I think here they build that new IoT strategy around an IoT platform. So instead of seeing that, uh, like, uh, thank you and see you in three years, they more or less give away the truck day one, and then there the customer journey starts, and then it's up to the, their sales team to sell value added services and other type of services on top of the truck that creates value of the customer. And I, I call this like a service-based world that an IoT connectivity platform can um, give to a corporation like Volvo or Caterpillar. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it totally unlocks uh, new revenue streams, right? And uh, one example is this um, you know, enterprise examples that David just mentioned. But uh, as one of these dealing a lot with SMEs and startups, then uh, 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 from that sector, we have all seen how scooter sharing industry have uh, suddenly popped up very quickly. And without IoT, we wouldn't see the, such things. We wouldn't be able to, you know, rent the scooter on the street and 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 rent it by uh, by minutes or, or hour and and leave it for someone else to rent it uh, after that. So like like companies like Tier or Voy or Bolt that we have seen on the market would not exist. So that's a good example how you know IoT unlocks a totally different uh, revenue stream, totally different business model. 
And same goes to like car sharing, for example, if we see uh, share now by BMW, for example, in Europe uh, kicking off. So, so these are very cool examples how actually the whole uh, business changes uh, with IoT. And that's important to, to, uh, to understand. And uh, I think in, in, a, in, in one enterprise, you know, one needs to think like uh, how they uh, solve it. And there needs to be a one like um, leader or department uh, oh, like running this show who has the mandate to, uh, to make this change. It cannot be a side pro uh, project for, for enterprise. And, and you'd think, so looking at the, 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 the businesses that have been successful in in changing the way they work, you know, changing to almost renting a, a jet engine or a caterpillar truck by the hour, that that kind of change has to come from the top, right? That is that doesn't start with with a, a, an assistant project manager having a good idea and wanting to get into IoT. That absolutely is a systemic change right through the business. Absolutely, and you can't put any of the platforms on any of the backends in place if it's just the side project or let's see what happens uh, project. Uh, so if Volvo or, or someone uh, like Big is, is making this change, they need to think through how it actually changes their business model and how, it, uh, how the system should support it. So it yeah. all comes from there. Yeah, I agree also. And I think that's when you do these uh, IoT projects, I think the majority is to communicate to the organization why we're doing this and how we're changing the, the model. And the IoT platform, the IoT connectivity platform is, is a technology part of this, but the rest needs to be there. Otherwise, it will not be successful. Yeah, so you have to bring everybody with you. Um, more, one, I guess, guess one for you. Um, IoT platforms, what are they? What do we mean when we're talking about IoT platforms? What do we mean? Yeah, I have to admit that it's, it's a total mess on the market, right? So, um, first of all, it's uh, important to clarify that uh, how we define an uh, IoT uh, uh, platform and, and uh, what is the difference between IoT platform and uh, IoT connectivity platform. So, we see it in a way that IoT platform is the whole ecosystem consisting of, uh, you know, connectivity platform, backends, whatever other pieces the enterprise need to put together. And connectivity platform is one important piece of this puzzle uh, and, uh, and, and very crucial piece, but uh, definitely not the most important one and shouldn't be taken as, you know, standalone uh, technical platform uh, as such. So that's, uh, I think, the most uh, uh, critical thing. And, uh, and, and yeah, like David already mentioned, then when selecting the IoT uh, connectivity platform, then, you know, one should think of it not as from the technological perspective, like what it can do, but more like a, a functionality side, how it can support all other layers in the in the enterprise, uh, whether it uh, you know comes with APIs for integrations or automations, whether you know the self-service functionalities are in place to do, for example, debugging, whether it supports billing if and, and invoicing if it's very important for the for the uh, uh, customer, or does it support bulk actions and so on? So it all needs to serve the whole whole uh, ecosystem that actually the enterprise is building up i think i think you you've hit the nail on the head um david i'm going to ask you sort of what an iot ecosystem is we know what a platform is but maybe what do we mean by iot ecosystem um and how does that interrelate to what the platform is what the product is what the service is yeah, so I think this is a good starting point uh, uh, when you look at an IT ecosystem. You know, for me, an IT ecosystem is that it's a, something that is built by a manufacturer or OEM. can be Volvo, Caterpillar, App, um, Samsung, Apple. 
and it's deployed by consumer or enterprises and is used by multiple actors for multiple purposes and it creates different type of values for a, for a Volvo truck it can be one value for internal value to get data from the truck about uh, that they use internally to build new trucks, but it could also be other values for the customers. Where are the truck? How much petrol have they used? And are my drivers driving the truck in the right way? And <clears throat> all these, I think here we are very high level up, but this is where we should be when we are defining our strategy and our plan how to attack IoT and then take it from here further down. Uh, and I think the IT connectivity platform is a key part here in to manage this ecosystem. It's not everything, but it's a key part. And depending on what you need, you need to select the platform and not to forget the partner managing the platform that supports your model, your business model. Okay, thanks. Um, so so more, maybe you could, I mean, David's talked about kind of what the ecosystem, the, the IoT ecosystem is. Maybe sort of both, both you and David could just tell us a little bit about the ecosystem platform, what they, what they consist of, what they deliver, and, and, and why probably they're so, so important. Um, just before you start that, though, um, one thing, I've just got the poll results in. 71% of our audience uh, think that platforms are very important in their purchase decision. So between us, we must be doing something right. Um, more, maybe you can expand on that when you're, when you're talking here about, about your, uh, what, what the, uh, the ecosystem of IT platform is. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um... There are many ways uh, how to divide it, uh, but uh, very in, in simple terms, yeah, basically, um, uh, it, you can divide it into you know connectivity management layer, which is for you know managing the sim life cycle, you know turning on and off, use it for debugging and so on. Then there is a layer of uh, you know database and backend management uh, that the enterprise need to uh, build up which actually handles the raw data of all of the processes. Then, of course, it needs to come with a device management uh, layer uh, for all of the you know, hardware operations and updates and, and software de deployments, right? Uh, then they can't miss the data management uh, side either for you know, analytics and, and uh, visualization and, and peak data. So uh, and and it all actually bundles together into you know service and support management uh, layer, which is which is a let's say like administrative uh, portal for the company to 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 run the business uh, and and uh, for the let's say support to run the debugging and and the basically business logic uh, stays there. And, and usually, yeah, companies have their external interface as well, uh, the portal that you know end customers are using or controlling. For in the example of scooter sharing, it, it's in the app where they log in and unlock the scooter and then start using it, and uh, and where they put their credit card in and when they you know the company charges uh, for the scooter sharing use. But the main point here is that, yeah, you shouldn't treat all of these uh, platforms and layers like separately. So uh, enterprise needs to be interested in the, you know, integration between those platforms. And, and it has many, many layers on different uh, cases. It acts differently. Like, I don't know if, let's say, if we take the debugging uh, case, then, uh, you know, part of the system or, or the information comes in from the connectivity management side, the, um, the device management side takes care of the whatever updates are needed or uh, looking into the details, then somehow internally within the enterprise, so, uh, the support needs to handle the cases as well and use another layer. So, so the complexity comes from there to make all of the layers work together, interact together, 
and and basically integrate them all uh, to act as one uh, one. Yeah, and I think uh, and I think that's the modern way to see of IT platforms. You can see this in two different ways. When IT started, it was a pure technology view of this. It was like boxes you put on each other and said, these are what you need. But today, we are, as uh, Mark described, it's a bit more complex. So I would like to say that you should see this as a functional way instead. So if you have an IT connectivity platform, you will need security management. You will need device some device management. And you will need maybe parts of one to many boxes to support it, depending on what is your specific use case. I think that's the reason why you need to understand what you're going to develop and what you try to solve, and then transform that to requirements into the selection of an IoT platform. Thanks. I mean, one of the, well, I guess well, this is a question to, probably to everybody, right? Everyone on the call. Um, not just not just the, the the talking heads we got I got in front of me. Um, what trends do you see in our in the IoT platforms market? We had a question in from Richard, who I believe is in Utah, which is pretty. <laughs> I think he probably wins the longest person from Jersey, further away from Jersey. Um, so he he specifically asked, "What do we think about Volti? Any comments on a Volti solution?" Um, but also, anybody else sort of around the table? What trends do we see in IoT platforms? How do we see the market changing, evolving? Where's it going? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I can kick it off from uh, from the easy mangle because we are trying to be the uh, front runners among you know SMEs uh, uh, and startups. Uh, so uh, definitely, the adoption of eSIM is is one angle, and uh, you know. Uh, if you are swapping from one carrier or, or telecom to the another one, then uh, you need to think through how the platforms work, right? Because if do, doing the transaction, the swap itself is easy, but how you uh, keep, keep on managing those sims later on. So uh, it, it creates a very big complexity uh into the model because then you basically need to operate with uh, multiple connectivity management platforms or or try to get it from one place or do the different integrations so so then the ecosystem definitely becomes very uh, hard to 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 keep running yeah and i, and I think that simplification customers are used to be able to buy services in an easy way and i think that's what telco have to learn telco is like it is is from a telco perspective but now when it is growing they're coming in new actors into the it ecosystem with the other type of business models and i think that's something i see a trend is that customer will, will in the future demand to buy Connectivity and connectivity closed services in another way is much easier way. You you need you don't need to buy everything to start with. You want to select which one to start with, and then you want to upgrade and you want to have more visibility. And maybe we talk about the as we said with Volt, you need to be able to support different type of technologies in one platform. So simplification that's something um, I think is a trend mm -hmm. that we we have to work with both and in, mm -hmm. in eSIM as uh, you described. All this integration, it's so expensive and so long time. It's just mm. the benefits is not there. And here we are in the market have to develop these platforms so customer can get the benefits much faster. Mm. And what do you say? I mean, obviously, Richard's asked his comment about Volti. What, what do, do you see? Uh... Um, uh, a, uh, a useful, so I guess, voice and IoT in the same same solution. I know I've seen a couple of applications, sort of like um, safety systems in lifts and things like that, where you need that voice component yeah. as well as being able to track the lift. Do you see a rising trend in in voice and or Volti? And um, not really as of today we haven't seen it much but yeah like you mentioned the elevator uh, industry is one where you need to have a uh, you know call uh, in, in terms of uh, emergency but of course the automotive industry uh, has their 
uh, need as well. But but yeah, uh, haven't seen that that much. But yeah, probably are taking but, early early steps. Yeah, and I can think maybe you know many. Uh, it's a lot of sunset of two G networks around the world and 2G networks that voice more or less because data is so slow so I think that is when uh, when uh, MNOs are sunsetting old technologies we as MNOs and, and the, in the ecosystem needs to be able to deliver voice in another way and bolt this of course I mean that is the way to do this over over IP so yes but I don't see I, I, I agree voice is not so common in pure IoT deployments is more on the consumer side of this. No, one of the, what somebody, uh, Klaus, um, who, who I know, well, we both know, I should do, don't we? Klaus uh, has uh, made a comment about uh, also often used in healthcare, which actually is a good point. Healthcare, people tracking, I mean, is that there's an increasing need for people who are, want to live independently, but maybe aren't able to quite live as independently as they'd like having a maybe a tracking solution but also has a voice solution integrated so, so. i totally agree i totally agree and mm. many of these healthcare s solutions like uh, home healthcare are built around old technology with traditional voice and that needs to be migrated into an ip based voice so i think volta definitely yeah. but i think the the big volumes are not there no no i think you're right okay so so Kind of, we understand the need. We understand the product and its component parts. What a platform is, its component parts. Um, but if you two were one of you is, but if if both of you were running big OEM type companies, and you had this idea that you wanted to pivot into a, 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 as an as a service type uh, business model, where would you start? What where, where would you uh, where would you kick off? Yeah. So. When you when you start, uh, then yeah, like like I mentioned, this um, uh, top to bottom approach uh, needs to happen, and and then the first thing you have to do is to determine who you are uh, and what you need uh, the platform for, uh, because you know if you are a reseller, then you have totally different needs uh, from the connectivity platform. Uh, for example, you are more probably want to have the flexibility in creating different roaming uh, packages and network lists in each and every country. Uh, you, you just need more control over those things. Um, but if you are a service provider, then you probably need more like, a, I don't know, a bulk management uh, features that uh, you need for, you know, uh, Doing software updates or, or you know, tagging, uh, grouping sims in order to to manage them uh, in bulk. Uh, if you are end user, you have your other uh, needs. If you are a hardware manufacturer, for example, looking from uh, for new revenue streams and adding you know connectivity into your uh, uh, device, then you have an, again totally other needs. So at the end of the day, it comes down to who you are and what business model you have. And yeah, whether you are in, in B2B, uh, B2B2C or, or B2C, that's uh, again uh, creating uh, different needs for you. So, so the first thing is to determine why you need it. Yeah, and, and uh, I think the next step is to to look at what you do try to solve with this IT connectivity platform. Are you a mature player and you have a lot of tools in-house and you, the only thing you need is pure connectivity, then you need a, a solution for that. Or, or do, you, do you need a more managed IT connectivity solution? Then you need another type of solution. So I think that is back to what are you trying to do here? Uh, so analyze. Uh, about your IT solution and how the need, I mean the demand and the need from the customer you're trying to solve this IT sol solution for, and then transform this to requirements to see what kind of platform and partner. And I think last, that's how do you want to work here? I think that's I like this uh, approach to this. It's like there are many many uh, MNOs and, and others who has an IT platform. 
but they don't understand IoT and the need you need to help from there. So if you're making a deal with these ones, it can be I mean, create a lot of problems for you later on. So I think it's important both to look at the platform, but more important to look at the partner you're working with. Mm-hmm. And yeah, your, your needs might change in time as well, right? For example, if you are scaling, uh, they are definitely, the needs are, are changing a lot. And uh, when you start off, uh, of course, you don't need a very extensive and uh, either expensive system to run the, the sims and, 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 and your fleet, fleet. But w- once you start scaling, you don't want to be stuck with uh, you know, uh, limited platform uh, features. Uh, but of course, you don't want to do the investment and, and spend a year or two to set up the system when you kick off, right? So it's very important to to um, map out when you start of what your needs are, and then try to look ahead that if I'm scaling, whether I can still manage tens of thousands of sims like that, or what do I need then, or can I do the changes then, or uh, or, or uh, 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 do I have a lock in somewhere or bottleneck? Yeah, and, and I see that also is two aspects. One is that we we work with both big companies and smaller companies. For well, smaller companies, they try to go to the big MNOs in the market, and they don't have processes and ways of selling to small companies. That but they can, they will be big in the future. And um, yeah, so uh, that can I think that's also an important approach. So what's what's interesting for me about that whole scaling thing is it's um, and excuse me because I'm going to absolutely mispronounce your name completely, but somebody called uh, Tavi um, has, has has made a made a comment about trends in the market about the the introduction of AI and machine learning for an even more seamless service. And I think that that chimes in very well with what you guys are saying around um, how people have to scale, people have to make, and as you scale you have to keep that sort of cost base of, of supporting your customers, supporting your devices, whatever, as low as possible. And I, and yeah. I think that's an, you know, an excellent point that around the, the whole machine learning. and, and uh... mm-hmm. Yeah, in the ideal world, you know, what we have seen as well is that uh, customers who have scaled up uh, heavily, uh, they usually, when, whenever they uh, have some kind of issues or, or problems with the let's say, connectivity or devices, uh, then uh, they don't want to, uh, they would like to hear it right away from their partners, right? So the system should be tracking uh, the, the, uh, the, how the, you know, sims and devices are behaving and and notifying automatically rather than just, uh, you know, uh, someone that checks and finds out that, oh, it's not actually working, right? So, yeah, that is a way to go and move forward for sure. Yeah, and and, and uh, I think that's a trend also is that we have so much data that we don't show in the platform that we have in, in our core networks and in, in the roaming partners and all that stuff. And I think... We have to be better to use this, as you said, to to help our customers to take decisions. Either they take it by logging in or you do it automatically. Mm-hmm. And I think that's mm-hmm. a trend that how can we use all this data to create better services, more automation and more transparency to the customers about mm-hmm. the decision they need to take. Yeah, because at the end of the day, with the connectivity platform what we need to or why we need it is to move away from the you know just getting the sim and buying the megabytes and gigabytes it's all about how you smoothly run your iot uh, f- fleet and and uh, how you make the integrations work between your system and and yeah if it comes with you know some machine learning or ai elements in it uh, to you know, make the process even smoother than you know, just uh, that that would be just ideal. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So I've just got a couple of notes. People are having a couple of problems with the platform with the sound. I think 
uh, if we'll carry on uh, as it is, but if, if people are having lots of problems, please let us know on the chat, and we can always reboot the room. It only takes 30 seconds or so and see if that makes a difference. Um, but what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll plow on for now, but if people are having problems, please let us know. Um, we will uh, we, we'll, we'll reboot the room. Um, so let, let's move on. David, um, I, I guess actually this is another question we could probably ask the whole audience. Um, what features... Uh, in a platform, does everybody think that's important? Um, are, are you're going to talk now about um, the common mistakes that people make when they're selecting a platform, but I think if the audience could also maybe have a little bit of uh, share some of their experience about what they feel is important and, and any any um, any potential mistakes they've made, because we all uh, we all make mistakes in in business. We know that. Yeah, I think the, the first point I'm having here is that you know. There are no platform in the whole world that can solve all your problems. If you come to a supplier who tells you I can solve all your problems, you should go away from them because it will probably end up in a long, long, long project, very costly. And then in the end, you don't have any value of your IT project and deployment. So I think here is like you need to find a partner where you can start crawling and then upgrade it as your volume increase. So Different platforms have different capabilities and then no platform in the world can solve all the problems. And I think <clears throat> the other is that, as we said, platform is not only about technology. I mean, we talk about Volta or 5G or 2G and all this, and how is this managed in the platform? And that is very different from different platforms. And it can also affect how you're selling to your customers. Some platforms is better in some areas and some platforms is not as good in these areas. So I think that is imp important to focus not only on the pure megabyte, like I want to find an MNO who can give me the lowest price, but actually connectivity is not so expensive if you look at the whole IoT deployment. It's a very important part, but if you have a platform that are not supporting your model and you have very low megabyte price, maybe the total cost will be much higher. And lastly, I should say that and we have said it before. It's like you need to know what you want to do. What is your business model? And and then transform this into requirements in both to the partner and the platform uh, to make sure that it supports your model. And I see that many, many times that customers sitting with some very big telco platform and it's not giving them the support they need. So they need another type of partner with another type of platform technology. Thank you um, for that. We have had quite an interesting question in from uh, from somebody on the, on the chat. Um, from your experience so far, and this may be one for you, Mark, rather than us, because I, I, I know from us the answer is yes, we do. But from your experience so far, do MNOs tend to share SIMs with IoT startups? Do they cooperate? I guess the... Yes. A um, very broad one, right? So uh, yeah. there are... <laughs> uh, there are... Uh, I think there are 1,200 MNOs and... Uh, or, or 700 MNOs and 1,200 MVNOs on the market, right? Uh, they all do not uh, get what the IoT sector is doing or tries to tries to do, and and some even see a threat uh, on the market because uh, they in lot in in many cases IoT is like a low data volume sim, uh, not generating um, much revenue to the MNO, right? So so. Some do not see, uh, but yeah, I'm uh, uh, over the past five years that we have been pushing one OT, then uh, it has improved a lot actually over time, and uh, and uh, and yeah, the platform element has be, has played a huge part there, uh, because back in the days it was all about uh, megabytes and gigabytes, uh, and all about uh, what coverage I can offer and what's the price. And, and then gradually the platform element came in, mostly, of, of course, from the 
technical point of view, like David uh, uh, described earlier, that uh, just like a self-service element for for uh, switching SIMs on and off or setting data limits, and uh, just for the reason of not bothering the MNOs uh, support channels that uh, much. But yeah, it has evolved from there because uh, yeah, there are now uh, like big sectors who run like hundreds of thousands of SIMs and you know just to have the self-service uh, environment is not enough because yeah they they already need like these machine learning elements they need integrations with uh, APIs and, and, and so on they they need much much more yeah, and I see also that, I mean, and I agree with you, that happens so much uh, during these years, but I also see a trend that both MNOs and governments are protecting in some areas in the world. And that's, for my, in some areas, is going on the opposite direction. Is uh, And that's not around IoT, that's just generic. How can we protect our market? And I think that's where plays, I mean, we need to work together to make sure that we can deliver a global cognitive disturbance in all areas. Not like if you want to be in this area, you need to buy our box. <laughs> it needs to be a locker on it and uh, you cannot open it. Then you have to ask us. Uh, yeah. in, in, in generic, yes, it's going in the right direction, but there are some areas where we see it goes opposite. Yeah, and you know, being a little bit parochial about this, I must admit that you know, we've built a successful business on supporting you know, our, our IoT customers of all sizes. Um, you know, we have both channel partners and we have OEMs. And uh, yeah, we, 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 posit we, we want to work with IoTs, IoT startups, especially have some you know, brilliant ideas. Out there. There's some brilliant ideas out there and we love supporting them. So uh, yeah, from us, it's, uh, we, will, we, we will and we do want to work with the IoT startups. Um, Mark, should we move on a little bit about your experience? I, get, I guess um, it kind of, dovetails nice to the next slide if you could tell tell us a little bit about um uh, some of the success that you've had uh mm -hmm. with uh within you know, the iot market and how how a platform has completely enabled a business that didn't exist three four mm -hmm. years ago. yeah absolutely yeah the uh, uh my my big favorite is the uh, scooter sharing industry of course because we've been uh, lucky to serve those guys and we have provided <clears throat> hundreds of thousands of sims to, uh, to these guys. And we, we see what they need. And we are, of course, we have learned ourselves a lot as well while, while uh, trying to keep up the pace uh, uh, of those. Because I think they started sca scaling, as you probably all saw, and uh, over the last two years, they have been... Uh, scaling heavily and usually what those um, uh, companies are doing they are expanding uh, uh, to you know tens of uh, countries and you know uh, i don't know up to 100 cities uh, worldwide and they are in the position where they can't anymore think of you know megabytes and and gigabytes they need to think that what comes with it because usually how they run their business is that they have the um, like a hedge cutter where they run the whole fleet. And of course, then they have the local operations units for, you know, changing batteries and, and operating the feed. But all of the connectivity management is actually done centrally from one, one, uh, one place. And, and they need a platform to manage those uh, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of SIMs. That what they usually do is that they group the SIMs, they tag the SIMs. Whenever you need to do software updates, they use the platform for sending SM, bulk SMSs to, to certain groups, for example. Whenever something goes down, then, of course, they need to do debugging. They need to to see what's going on and then it's a heavy like interaction between connectivity platform and the device management platform uh, and yeah they have different different cases uh, uh, like stealing of course a lot of scooters are stolen 
they need to be notified if some weird behavior, you know, if the scooter is going out of, let's say, uh, whitelisted country, they need to react very quickly. Or when, whenever there are misuse, I don't know, scooters are tracked to the, uh, to the uh, you know, inside of the premises and, and, and not kept on the street so that the user wants to, you know, uh, later on uh, carry on using the same scooter. So they need to detect those misuses and, 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 uh, and they have like uh, scooter repairing uh, uh, operations are also quite uh, tricky ones for them because they usually need to mark the scooters that they, you know, take off the street uh, to repair something. They collect uh, X amount of uh, scooters together to, to uh, change one part. But meanwhile, they, they need to, I, I don't know, put the sims to, to sleep or offline uh, until this happens. And then they need to wake it up uh, again and, 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 and you know, roll it out on the street. So they have a lot of complexity they need to uh, figure out. And, and uh, those guys have uh, used all of the features and functionalities uh, of, of our platform, for example. So, yeah, it's an intense cross-use and handling of the uh, platforms. And, and uh, beforehand, I, I just you know, uh, described those uh, six layers they are using those uh, layers heavy and have integrated those uh, on, on many, many levels. Okay, thank you. Um, we're into the last kind of five minutes of this of, uh, of the webinar. So, um, uh, David, maybe you'd like to just talk about a, a, another use case of, of, of how a platform adds enterprise value, and that's the sort of the MBNO or the, or the channel partner reseller. Um, yeah, and I think this is an area where I mean, JT have been successful. We have helped many MVNOs and resellers uh, with global connectivity. And that's been important for us to build our platform so we can give this support. And it can be both that you have a very strong API so you can access, you have your own platform. It can also be that you have this type of customer structure which supports a reseller approach. And it's also that we as a partner uh, are acting as a reseller want us to act. And then I think also the last point here that I really like is, you know, as a reseller or as an MVNO, you want to own as much infrastructure as possible so you can have control of this. And I think that's important when you go to when you're buying an IT connectivity platform and you're buying connectivity, what parts are in your hands and what parts are in the su suppliers or partners' hands? And what control do you have of them? Because the day you have problems or the day you want to do some development or something else that is not, then this can uh, create uh, problems for you. So I think, and I think that's quite typical in the market that you, your reseller and maybe you are selling B to B to C and then you select your platform because you have these fantastic megabytes and then when you start mapping up your customers in the platform you understand that oh no this is not possible and then it ends up that you need a separate billing system a separate CRM system and then suddenly your your uh, IT project becomes double expensive uh, both for time and all this integration so yeah, reseller is a really good case where um, where you have need these uh, functionalities. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. From from our experience, looking at our customers, um, we got the results back in our second poll. So um, two thirds of the uh, the, the uh, audience think that integration in APIs are, are vital for success of an API of, a, of an IoT platform, and I, I would probably agree. I think that we yeah we, totally. A lot of our a lot of our, our interactions when, uh, with our Nomad platform of our API over ninety percent. Um, so as we reach the final final slide, um, a little checklist about uh, what to look for in, a, in an enterprise platform, an IoT platform, um, and also probably maybe uh, David, you 
sum up why you think an IT connected uh, platform is so vital to the to the enterprise value, to the value they can add to enterprise? Mm -hmm. But there, first of all, maybe I can yeah, comment that there there is no silver uh, one silver bullet or or or, or, or one uh, platform that can uh, you know solve the whole complexity for you. So that's the uh, first point, and there's no checklist because yeah, it all comes down to like we described that uh, uh, who you are, whether you're a reseller, hardware manufacturer, or uh, service provider or uh, what is your business model so it, it really depends like whether you need a good billing or invoicing system to to invoice or uh, your end customers whether you need a SAP client views to the platforms or not uh, to provide you know access or limited access to the the connectivity platform whether you need notifications apis whether you need to uh, set up your own uh, coverage plans and so on and so on. So uh, it really comes down to, 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 to that. Yeah, and I like this, uh, you know, usually when you describe an IoT ecosystem, uh, the IoT connectivity platform and the connectivity gets a small little box in the middle and then you have cloud and application and device, and so many platforms. But in reality, if you look at another approach, I see, I, I usually describe it like this, that an IT connectivity platform and connectivity is a fundament for all levels. Because if you don't have connectivity, you can have the best device management platform in the world or the best application management platform in the world. You can still don't connect your smart object or your application. So I think this is... Uh, I think this picture really show that that, that that the enterprise value in the end that you want to create as a as an enterprise, it's very important that you select the platform that supports your business model and how you want to work, and that you select the connectivity that fits for you. Otherwise, the other part will not work. Because at the end of the day, the uh, the IoT should bring like. Uh, uh, new value and new revenue streams and a new business business model to you, uh, and and you should focus on uh, how you set it up. So you shouldn't focus on how much the megabyte or gigabyte uh, uh, costs or or um, uh, or some kind of very technical platform one you know certain feature. So uh, so yeah, that if you want to boost the enterprise value, then uh, first of all. You need to solve uh, the big topics first. Well, Mark, I think you have absolutely summed up the whole conversation in that last sentence. I think you absolutely na nailed it there. It is all about what, how you derive, derive enterprise value um, from the platform and, and, and upwards and outwards, as we've seen from this diagram. Um, I don't know if you've got any closing comments. I mean, I thought that was the perfect closing comment, to be honest. Um, we're almost out of time as well. Um, David, do you have any sort of closing messages you'd like to leave uh, our audience no. with? No, I think that if anyone has any more questions, so welcome to contact me or Graham or Mart to send an email or whatever, and I will respond. I think this is an interested area, and I think this will grow as, I mean, whatever happened this years with COVID and all that stuff, everything should be remote um, connected. So I think IT will just become more and more important. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, so yeah, just to sort of, Mark, I don't know if you've got anything you'd like to say, or I think that was... I think, yeah, that's, uh, that uh, we have covered the main, main topic, so nothing else to add. All right, perfect. So I uh, just let everybody know we'll be sending the slide deck out uh, early next week. Um, there's a couple of bank holidays either side. Um, so uh, please look out for your, in your inbox for that. There's also a couple of white papers that we'll be sending along with it. Um, so a couple from IoT, uh, from 118 and a, uh, another couple from us. So it uh, just remains for me to say thank you very much for attending. Thank you for your time. I know time's precious, but hopefully this last hour has uh, given you uh, an insight into how uh, an IoT connectivity platform can uh, add enterprise value. So uh, thank you very much and uh, goodbye. Thank you.
Thank you. Bye-bye.